14. Providence and the Sabbath The Sabbath means rest, and Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 speaks of entering into God's rest as the meaning of the Sabbath. What does this mean? The Church has overstressed the Sabbath as a day of worship and understressed or neglected it as a day of rest. The Sabbath is indeed a day of worship, as every day must be. On the Sabbath, of course, our worship is more than personal or familial. It is also communal. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Our salvation is more than a simply personal fact. It is a kingdom fact, and we must manifest our citizenship therein by worshipping together and by applying God's law words to every area of life and thought. Salvation is not a solitary fact. But even more than a day of worship, the Sabbath is a day of rest. The Church has indeed stressed rest, but superficially so. Rest does involve a cessation of work activity. We must indeed say that a first requirement of the Sabbath is to cease from work. This is an elementary and a necessary requirement, and Scripture is emphatic on this point. Not only in the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20 verses 9 to 11, Deuteronomy chapter 5 verses 12 to 15, but throughout the law, Exodus chapter 23 verse 12, chapter 31 verses 13 to 17, chapter 34 verse 21, chapter 35 verses 2 and 3, Numbers chapter 15 verses 32 to 36, Leviticus chapter 19 verses 3 and 30, chapter 26 verse 2, etc. The Sabbath is thus very literally and very seriously a day of rest from work. Second, the Sabbath means not only a cessation of work where our vocation or duties are concerned, but also work in the sense of planning. To enter into God's rest, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 5, means that we cease from the management of our lives and rest in the omnipotence of God, who rests in his works. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10. Taking thoughts or being anxious about the morrow, Matthew chapter 6 verse 25, is refusing to rest in the Lord. It is a denial of the fact that our Sabbath rest is in him, in his atonement and in his government. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Taking a physical rest on the Sabbath is thus empty formalism if we remain fretful and anxious, and if we spend the day planning our days as though the government were up on our shoulders. The rich fool was a man who assumed that the future depended upon him and his planning. Luke chapter 12, verses 16 to 21. Third, obviously, to enter into God's rest means more than no work. The rest means, in part, the promised land is clear. It also means heaven and the new creation. It also means our regeneration, our birth into the new creation, Christ's kingdom. The Sabbath, thus, is inseparably linked with salvation. To enter into God's Sabbath is to enter into the kingdom of God, to be a new creation, and it means that our salvation is not our work, but Christ's work. The Sabbath, thus, is a type of salvation and of the kingdom of God. Many hymn writers have beautifully described this fact. John Newton, 1774, wrote, From our worldly care set free, May we rest this day in thee. And continued, Here afford us, Lord, a taste of our everlasting feast. Charles Wesley, 1763, called it the type of that everlasting rest the saints enjoy in heaven. William Walsh or Howe, 1871, called attention to the day of creation, the day of Christ's resurrection and our redemption, and the day of Pentecost, as all setting forth the meaning of the Sabbath. Isaac Watts, 1719, stressed the Sabbath as a day of victory. 
Today he rose and left the dead, and Satan's empire fell. Today the saints his triumph spread, and all his wonders tell. Christopher Wordsworth, 1862 Called it the new day for the heavenly manna to fall, and the day of rest in grace. It is also, as some hymn writers have seen, a day of instruction in the doctrines of grace. Fourth, to rest in the Lord means to trust in his providence. If we recognize in very truth that the government of all things, including our lives, is upon his shoulders, Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7, then we will indeed rest in the Lord. All fretfulness and anxiety is either a denial of God's providence or a distrust thereof. All too often we in practice act as though we are sure that the government of our lives and the universe would be better managed if it were in our hands. This is the practical meaning of fretfulness and anxiety. We prefer our planning to God's predestined plan, and we assume that somehow God is either forgetful of us or none too intelligent in his planning and providence. It is, however, we pretended gods who are the idiot gods, and all wisdom, power, majesty and government are the Lord's. Paul and his fellow workers tell us that those who enter into God's rest cease from their works. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 10 That is, they do not work nor plan nor continue in anxiety. Rather, they obey the commandment. Be content with such things as ye have, for he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 The alternative to entering into God's rest, in ceasing from labour and anxious planning, fretfulness and worry, is unbelief or disobedience. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 The word translated as unbelief in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 11 in the King James Version is rendered as disobedience in many modern versions. In the Greek it is apathia, obstinate, unpersuadable, refusing to be persuaded. The alternative to the true Sabbath or rest of and in the Lord is thus a refusal to trust in Him or to believe that His providential government of all things is alone all-wise, all-righteous, and all-holy. Where there is no lively belief in the Sabbath as the day wherein we rest in God's providence, then we have there a dreary and formal Sabbath, a restless one. We have then a restless society outside the church, and a stagnant and impotent one within because neither believer nor unbeliever moves in terms of God's perfect ordination and government of all things. The state then seeks to be the source of providence, or else every man functions as his own providence. Fretful and peevish men burn up their energies in anxious labour and frenzied recreation, trying to control the world around them and within them, and to provide themselves with a happiness which comes from things and activities but is not, nor can be, their peace of being. Without providence as the presupposition of all their thinking, men can neither rest nor work effectually. To have no faith in providence is to have no faith in the Lord. It means to be unbelieving and disobedient. It is the restlessness of men who have no faith. Of such the Lord says, But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 20 and 21.